what on earth is wrong with this man? One of his arms looks normal while the other one looks abnormally thickened. What happened? Well, stick around to the end of the video to find out, but first, to understand what's going on, we have to dive into the structure and the workings of bone. Your bone is made up of two components, and to help explain this, I've got a little practical aid. A plant, or rather, the roots and the soil that are in the plant's pot. One of these parts of bone is called hydroxyapatite. This is represented by the soil. This part is very good at resisting compressive forces, but isn't so great when it comes to pulling forces. The other part is an elastic material called collagen, and this is represented by the roots of the plant. This part is quite strong when it comes to resisting pulling forces, but isn't so great when it comes to resisting compressive forces. These two materials work together to complement each other's weaknesses and overall form the very strong tissue that is bone. I mean, did you know that bone tissue is actually four times stronger than concrete? And pound for pound, it is stronger than steel. That's amazing. But what's even more amazing is bone's ability to adapt to its environment. Muscle and fat aren't the only tissues in our body that can adapt. Even though that's what most people go to the gym to train, your nerves, your blood vessels, your skin, your tendons, your ligaments, all of these tissues can adapt to their environment. And bone is no exception. In fact, bone is probably one of the best at adapting because it has a very good blood supply. This is why if you've ever broken a bone, for example, it does heal back rather quickly. Your bones don't even stop growing after puberty. Well, they might do in length, but they don't in width. The type of bone growth that occurs after puberty is called appositional bone growth. This is basically when the diameter of bone increases, and this type of bone growth continues well into adulthood. I mean, just look at members of your family, older men who have worked with their hands for a long period of time. They'll typically have thicker fingers, wrists and hands. To give bone its amazing adaptability, there are two cells that are always at work. One is called osteoclasts. Osteoclasts chew. I know C and CH aren't the same sound, but they both start with C, so it's a good way to remember it. So, clasts chew or break down bone. They help reabsorb old bone by dissolving it with enzymes. Osteoblasts build bone. Blasts build. And they do this by laying down more collagen and minerals. These two cells are in a constant back and forth, and they're always trying to maintain a balance, but that balance can be tipped one way or another with the environment that the bones are in. Think, for example, of martial arts practitioners. These people toughen up their bones to such a degree that they're able to smash through rocks with their bare hands. On the other hand, think of astronauts who go to space in zero gravity where there's relatively low load on the bones and they return with highly decreased bone mineral density. Now you want to build your bones, but how do you go about doing that, you ask? You just practice Kung Fu? Well, sort of. Blunt high force impacts like running, jumping or hitting yourself with sticks and punching bricks will definitely help you develop your bones, but you don't have to get anywhere near that specific. Because let's be honest, who has time to dedicate training just to bone growth alone? Most of us don't care about our ability to punch through bricks. So the good news is that actually just loading your muscles will in turn load your bones. I mean, it's pretty obvious actually. Whenever you use your muscles, you are moving your bones by pulling on them. The muscles will move tendons, which move bone, so that those insertion points of the bone will feel a great amount of force. Not to mention that when we do load ourselves with weight, our bones will experience compressive forces, shear forces, and pulling forces. This ticks all the boxes to signal bone to grow. And this is why powerlifters and weightlifters actually have some of the highest bone mineral densities in the world, because just like your muscles, your bones will adapt to load. Remember the osteoblasts? The ones that build bone? Well, once they finish their work, a lot of them get trapped in the bone matrix that they help create. And then they turn into cells called osteocytes. These osteocytes can actually orchestrate bone remodeling because from their position within the bone matrix, they can feel forces that are going through it. So as soon as they feel forces, they're gonna signal other osteocytes 
and the worker cells, osteoclasts and osteoblasts, to tell them how to build the bone to best respond to the stresses. So now we know the types of exercises that can help stimulate bone growth and how bone actually grows in adulthood. So now that we come to the end of the video, what was actually wrong with the man in the x-ray at the start of the video? Well, as you might have figured out by now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with him. He's actually just a tennis player, and that is his serving arm. Crazy how much of a difference training bones can make. I hope this video helped you understand the mechanisms behind bone growth in adulthood, and helps you think about some ways that you can start training them. So anyway, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.